Folks, welcome back. Major developments in the New York cases against President Trump. An appeals court dramatically lowering the amount of cash Trump needs to post as bond in the Letitia James absurd civil fraud case. Trump will now have to uh, have 10 days to pay a $175 million bond, less than half the original amount. Slice a humble pie, perhaps, for the corrupt attorney general of New York. The so-called hush money trial, in the meantime, was also pushed back to April 15th. Justice Merchant claiming that's a, quote, reasonable amount of time for Team Trump to wade through thousands upon thousands of pages of new discovery with this dump by the feds at the last minute on Team Trump. Let's bring in uh, former Florida Attorney General Pam Bondi. Good to see you, lady, as always. Uh, we're seeing Trump's poll numbers go up and up and up as the lawfare ramps up and up and up. Americans flocking to Trump's banner. You think the American people understand that what's happening to him is patently unfair and that's why his numbers continue not to suffer but actually increase? Certainly, certainly the American people see it. And the more they do to President Trump, the more they see it. It's horrible what they're doing to him, what they're trying to do to him. They won't be successful. Chris, I can tell you in a court of law, all of these cases will ultimately be reversed. But sure, the American people see it. And especially New Yorkers now. And, and these big businesses even see it. If they can do this to Donald Trump, they can do it to anyone. And yeah, that Judge Ingeron is horrible. He's been reversed at least five times during the course of this civil trial. And now, at least the fifth time, the appellate court just reversed him and dramatically reduced that number that President Trump has to pay. And, and you were right, it's absurd, the number that they wanted him to pay. It's still absurd, because ultimately he won't have to pay anything. This case will get reversed. It's a witch hunt by Letitia James. And we say that because she campaigned on getting Donald Trump. And that's not what a prosecutor should do. She has a clear conflict, yeah. not even an apparent conflict. So she has to um, she has to really get her act in order. She's not, though. She's going to keep going after him. But it's not going to make a difference because ultimately our justice system prevails, and that's why we have appellate courts. But it's going to take a while. Yeah. Pam, you remember that? Just as you were talking, I was reminded... Uh, Harry Reid, he told that lie about Mitt Romney and his taxes back when Romney was rolling over for Obama in that election, remember? And yeah. it was proven that Harry Reid was a liar about the taxes. But Harry Reid looked at the camera and said, well, he didn't win, did he? That's exactly yeah. the game that the Democrats are playing right now with all these cases against Trump, no? Yeah, Chris, it is, but at least it's backfiring now because this has been a concerted effort by the Democrats, whether it's New York, D.C., Palm Beach, all Georgia, all of these different jurisdictions. I firmly believe they're all working together to get Donald Trump, but people are seeing it because they've gone way too far. And they think they can stop the man, and they can't. He's going to be the next president of the United States, and it scares the progressives and the liberals to death. <laughs> yeah, that makes me smile. Meantime, right. Fulton County DA Fannie Willis telling CNN she's not embarrassed by the fallout from her unethical behavior with prosecutor Nathan Wade. Listen. I don't feel like my reputation needs to be reclaimed. Let's say it for the record. I'm not embarrassed by anything I've done. Um, you know, I guess my greatest crime is I had a relationship with a man, but that's not something that I find embarrassing in any way. I do think that there are efforts to slow down this train, but the train is coming. Yeah, train. Being a Democrat means you never have to say you're sorry or, or be held to any standard, right, Pam? Right. So, so her, her only crime was hiring her boyfriend to prosecute and go after Donald Trump, paying him three, four times more than the other attorneys were making, and going on vacation with him, allegedly using that money that he was getting paid. Oh, so that's no crime on her part. Yeah, they just they they always no. double down, always double down. Yeah, exactly. She's out of office too. Yeah, you know what? And they're never held to any standard, and that's that's the Republicans' fault. Uh, yesterday, federal agents raiding rapper Sean Diddy Combs' home in Los Angeles and Miami, two homes. Officials say they are investigating human trafficking allegations. Diddy has been accused of criminal behavior for a long time. Since November, four lawsuits were, were lodged yeah. against him. He flew, or told, he flew out of the country reportedly before the raid. Do you have any insight on this? 
I, I don't I don't know when he flew out of the country or why he flew out of the country. But as a former attorney general and prosecutor, I can tell you that Homeland Security would get involved, especially if there are allegations that a minor was involved. And if they were trafficking a minor, meaning have se having sex with a minor and moving a young child across state lines, whether it's California to his house in Miami, then that's when Homeland Security would get involved. Now, despite all these women's civil suits, and even if they sign a non-disclosure, criminal authorities can still come in and investigate this. And of course, it's the most, the rape of a child is the most serious allegation out there. And, and there's no consent if a minor is involved. So most likely, that's why they're involved. And I, it appears two of his sons were handcuffed outside of the house, but that may have simply been in the California mansion just so they could get in and search it. It appeared they were seizing devices meaning they most likely have some type of evidence of um, communications on a laptop, on a cell phone, because it showed the agents walking out with laptops and, um, and other electronic devices. So if they find things to corrobor corroborate what these women said, it could be very, very detrimental for him. And, and if they're true, it should be. Well, we're, we're going to continue to follow this case. It's, it's strange, fa fascinating, very, very strange about how this has all gone down in the lethargic way the government has pursued this particular case. Pam Bondi, thank you very much. Appreciate the time.